So today I'm going to show you how to tie up the standard commercial rig from the Jordan Holloway rig strip range. Now this is a very very simple pattern and it's one that's very versatile and you can use absolutely everywhere. So on the actual strip itself it tells you what you need to tie up this actual rig and we need an F1 maggot float, um, we need some bulk shots of number 8 and some number 9s, we need some 013 power lines. So I've got all that stuff here now and I'm going to show you how to tie up this rig. So what you actually do with the rig, rig strip is you have a hole on one end and um, like a groove on the other. The hole goes over this end and the lowest bit point of the actual ruler on the rig mate and this groove here just slots over this pin absolutely perfectly. So now we're all set up ready to make our rig on the actual rig mate. So perfectly set up. Um, this rig here is actually a bulk and two droppers. And that kind of rig lends itself perfectly to fishing over ground bait with maggots and casters and worms. You could fish pellets on it, you could fish worms, you could do absolutely anything on the bulk of two droppers. So very versatile pattern this one for that. So the F1 maggot float, I'll just show you the actual components of the rig itself. So this is an F1 maggot float in 4 by 16 and it actually has a 1.5mm hollow bristled float. So the actual hollow enough bristle helps with seeing the actual bristle basically in low light conditions and obviously you have a lot of that in the winter so i prefer hollow bristles because i can see them the stem itself is actually nice carbon so you can flick it out past your pole you can do a lot of different things with carbon it's just a very versatile stem material so that's the actual float the actual line itself it says on the rig strip what i use so 013 power line use this for lots of my rigs um, never breaks but it's thin enough to not not like hinder presentation it's just a nice all-round line you're not gonna get broke if you do hook a calf on it so that's 013 power line the actual shots itself it says we're gonna need some number eights for a bulk and number nine so I have them here so these are num these are eight and nines in the ballabinis and I like ballabinis because they don't move on the line they're nice and hard and don't move and I love that because I'm not a kind of person who plays around with the shotting patterns too much. Normally, once I've put the shots in position on the line, I don't tend to move them so much. So these are absolutely perfect for me. So I've got eights and nines, eights for the bulk, and two number nine droppers. So that's them. And then what I actually do is I normally use these shots to get the float to sit to about the bristle, then just to bring the bristle down a little bit, you know, get, get that dotted down a little bit more, and use number 13 stops. Um, just one or two of these normally is fantastic just to dot that float down because obviously in winter skimmer fishing you're going to get lots of shy bites so you need your floats dotted down and they do the job for that. Um, you're going to need some silicone for the actual float and this is 0.3 Guru silicon, really nice and fine and just enhances presentation really. If you use a thick silicon um, it just, just hand, like hinders presentation and you're not going to get as many bites so no, nice fine silicone. This is 0.3 guru stuff. Then the actual boring stuff itself. Got a pair of scissors for cutting the line. We have some pliers from Preston for putting the shots on. Never like to use my teeth to do that because obviously you can damage your teeth and you don't get your shots sitting as nicely in the bulk as you do with a pair of pliers. So that's them. Um, a loop tire. Always use a loop tire for tying the loop that my hook length connects to. I think it makes a nice neat little loop and it's a really strong loop. And when I actually make it by hand, um, they all end up being different sizes. So I like to use a loop tire to keep all my loops nice and uniform. And finally, it's just a black marker pen. So what I actually do is attach the line to the end of the rig mate. And when it's all set up on the actual rig mate itself, I like to mark where the actual shots go, the black marker on the line. So then I can place the shots exactly where they need to go. So a black marker pen is absolutely perfect. So. We'll start to make the actual rig itself now. So what we need to do is cut three pieces of silicon off to go on the float. Three pieces is nice because it just keeps the line nice and tight on the float. And if one breaks, you've always got a spare one then. So I'm just going to cut two pieces at like two or three mil long. Like that. And then I cut one a little bit longer because the last one I like to have overhanging on the bottom of the stem of the float just so the line doesn't damage. If you move the silicon up, and have the bottom of the stem showing it can rub on the line sometimes when you're fishing and it can cause damage and sometimes break your main line so I like to leave it overhanging so that doesn't happen so that's the three cut move that out of the way now 
and then I'm just gonna attach the actual line to the rig mate itself. And I'm using an extension today. Um, it just gives you more line to maneuver. So when you've actually got it all set up and you put your shots on and you wanna test your float in the shotting tube, you can because you've got all this extra line here to play with. So I like to use the extension. So I'm just attaching the actual line to the extension. Just put it over the actual pin at the end, put the metal disc over and then put, tighten it down on the hand wheel. If I can get it on, like so. Just gonna leave it nice and loose for now. Get to the end of the line here. Um, and then what I like to do is cut a nice sharp edge. Just makes it a lot easier to actually pass the float and the silicon through. So just gonna put the eye of the, put the line through the eye of the float. The float's nicely on. The two little bits of silicon first. One. This could be a little bit fiddly, this can, so I can't if sometimes can't even pick it up. Come on. It's one. Two. That's number three. Now I'm just gonna actually put them on the float itself, so. Where I actually position them is quite interesting as well, so. I'll just put the first one on. This could be the fiddly bit, getting the silicon on. So that's one. And I don't push it this right beneath the body. If you push this right beneath the body, it can cause the line to dig into the actual body and you can damage the body. And when you are playing big fish under pressure, if it pulls out, sometimes you can rip your eye out. So I like to leave that silicon just a little bit down from the body, just to relieve the tension on that, on that body and on that line. So just move it down about, about a centimetre below the actual body of the float is where I like to have my first silicon. Move this one into the actual middle of the float. Just obviously to keep the line nice and straight on that float. And then this last one, this longer piece, I just leave that overhanging a little bit just to obviously not cause any damage. Whereas if you push that up and have the stem showing, it, the line can rub against it. So I always have that little bit there just overhanging. So now we've got the float nicely on the line. Just gonna move him up there, out of the way. What I actually do now is actually make my loop that I'm gonna attach my hook length to later on. So what I actually do is just form a loop in the line and pinch it together and then get my loop tire get this finger here and I'll put it in the middle of that loop so it creates a nice tight two pieces of line here and then get my loop tie and put it underneath and just go twice, spin it twice so now I'm going to form a double loop of some sort put the actual loop it's created on this finger in the actual crook of the actual loop tie and just let it let it all tighten up now basically wet it up so it forms a nice stronger knot and then just slowly work its way off the actual loop tie like so um, and then it just falls in this little bit here and then I've got a nice formed loop. I'm just going to pull them nice and tight now. So I've got my nice loop, my actual hook length to be connected to. And this is where I always like to place my last dropper as well. So that's always good. Trim them off, trim them nice and tight. So now what I'm going to do is attach it to the actual rig mate. Because now it's time to put the shots on the line. So what I actually do is get this loop and put it on the bottom pin down here. Like so. Nicely locked. And now I'm just going to... Tighten this back up, tighten the line nice and nice tight line now. It makes it a lot easier to put the shots on. So I'm just making this line from this pin to the actual spool nice and tight. And I'm just going to move this hand wheel down now and just tighten him up. Like so. The line is nice and tight now. And what I was talking about earlier with this black marker pen now is I get my fingers, I move it along the line on the actual rig mate, like push the line down on the strip. And then when it gets to where the droppers are and where the bulk is, just mark it with a black marker pen. So there's one here by that loop, so it always is on my rigs. And there's one here, a bit further up. And that's where the bulk is. So now we're ready to put the shots on. And doing this little trick with the black marker pen just makes all your rigs absolutely identical. So when you go to tie up a duplicate, they'll all be exactly the same because obviously the strip hasn't moved and the line can't move. So all nice and neat and they're all going to be the same all you do put so i'm just going to place the actual shots on the line now I'm just going to use my pliers and i'm just going to put them on those black marks so starting with the one by the loop it could be a little bit fiddly but what i like to do is just press it from underneath the line and push the groove upwards so the, the shots 
the shop groove is facing upwards basically and I'm just gonna nice and steadily put some pressure on them and, and pinch him on don't want to pinch them too hard because I don't want them to crush or be straight or you know change shape I want them nice and round so again nice and steady and that's my two droppers on now so I've got my two number nines on I'm just going to place bulk of number eights it says so I'm just going to place my number eights on the line now starting with the first one and this is really important now you don't want to um, have an unneat bulk you want as neat a bulk as you can get so what I like to do is line up all the grooves on the shots now so the bulk's nice and uniform and it definitely gets you a better presentation you're going to get more bites a better presentation so I'm just going to create a bulk of about five so I think that'll be about right so I'll put five on this is going to be three and all these all the slits in the shots are all perfectly lined up for this now so look, this is going to be four and it just makes a really nice neat bulk really good presentation if you make nice neat bulks so I've put my fourth and fifth shots on the line now so I've made my little bulk nice uniform bulk all the slits are in the same position and it just makes them all nice and neat and the presentation is definitely going to be better like that so I'm going to catch more fish and what I'm actually doing now is I just took the actual loop off the rig mate at the end so it's all loose I'm just going to move the float down now to blow the bolt I'm just going to test it in the shot and tube here and this is the great thing about that extension it just gives you more line some more maneuverability basically to be able to do this without having to adjust the actual spool on the thing so just testing in now you can see that perfectly, perfectly at that um, at the bristle now. Yeah, so the actual bolts took the actual float down to the bristle, and we just need to add a couple of number twelve just to fine tune that down. And I like to fine tune it down to about half the bristle. If you do it much more than that, before you actually get to the bank, your float can just sit a little bit lower when you're actually fishing there by the lake. So I like to get to about half the bristle down. Because obviously you want your floats dotted down to see all those bites. In winter they give some of the smallest bites. So just pinching on two number 13 stops here now. And I just pinch them on above the bulk. Not really nice and neat, just above the bulk to start with. And then what you can do with stops is because they don't damage the line, they're quite easy to slide. Just slide them right down to above the bulk there. So that's absolutely perfect now. So I've got my... my um, adjustment shots on there my number 13 stops so now hopefully should bring the bristle down a little bit more it actually does need just another one so i'll just put one more on and this is the great thing about this setup that i have here you know you can just keep taking it on and off and adjusting it until you have your rigs exactly how you want it so i'm just gonna put one more on just push him together Test him again. And now hopefully it should be sitting absolutely perfect. Perfect. You can see that now it's just sitting about half of the bristle under the water. And then when I start fishing, it's either going to sit a little bit lower or it might just sit the same. And if it does, all I can do on the bank is just add one more number 13 on. So that's a good starting point for me. So the rig's ready now to basically wrap on the winder. So I'll just put this down here. Loosen the actual spool on the end of the rig, mate. Like so. And we'll just wrap him round, wrap him round the winder. This actual shotting pattern itself, I don't use in anything over like a top kit's depth of water. And I know about 15 turns of this winder will be just over a top kit. So I'll do 15 winds. That's one, two, three. Put the float nicely in the middle of the winder so it doesn't get damaged. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12, 13, 14, 15, like so, and a little bit more. And then what I actually do to finish this rig off is just make a big overhand loop because what I actually end up doing when I actually start fishing, I always tend to cut these rigs down. So just a nice big loop on this end that I can find and put on the, the actual Dacron that I'm using nice and easy. Like so, nice big overhand loop. Trim the tag a little. And we'll just put them on the little anchor on the end of the winder. Like so. And 
And yeah, so that's the actual rig itself finished now. So that's how to tie the standard commercial rig. And actually with this rig itself, the actual strip tells you exactly what hook length can marry it up to. So here it says a four inch hook length of AccuPower 010 and an 18 SFL hook. So gives you great little um, tips on how to tie your rigs up. And yeah, that's how to tie the standard commercial rig using the rig strip.